The year 2022 began with the effects of the measures taken to counteract the COVID-19 pandemic, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, and the global economic consequences of these two events. As if this were not enough, hunger in the world is increasing, and the countries that were already struggling will soon be worse off. According to reports from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, and the World Food Programme, which report that there are nearly 44 million people on the brink of famine. Why is this happening? We will answer this question below. Hunger is a physical sensation that warns us that we need to ingest food. You have surely felt it at some point. It is a bodily response that can cause discomfort, pain, dizziness, and low energy. This feeling ends when you eat. But imagine not being able to eat and going to bed hungry every night. This is the reality for millions of people in the world who cannot reach the minimum amount of food to survive. And this is what the UN and governments around the world define as hunger or famine. The problem is serious, and when hunger is chronic, it leads to malnutrition, illness, and ultimately death. Today, in the 21st century, we are facing one of the worst threats to poor countries and those that are developing. Despite scientific efforts, our great technological advances, the action of central governments and international treaties, hunger continues to advance among poor and marginalized populations. Why? How did this happen? And most importantly, what can we do to understand why there is still hunger in this globalized world, where obesity, hypertension, and diabetes are among the favorite topics of sports and health magazines? We must understand the origin of our food and resources. Most of the products we consume are based on three major cereals and grains, which are rice, wheat, and corn. Any variation in their production level and a long chain of derived products and services will be disrupted. Imagine that wheat is one of the domino tiles, and then follows flour, bread, breakfast cereals, energy bars, and many other wheat-based products. In addition, the cultivation, storage, export, and distribution of this cereal involve the relationship between countries, producers, farmers, and associated services. And we are only talking about one of the main and oldest cereals of the world, consumed by almost the entire planet. But more than 1.7 billion people live in marginal agricultural areas. That is, they are unable to produce or market their production in the market. The low production of these areas does not allow them to guarantee food for their inhabitants. 70% of the world's poor live in these places. Poor countries like Ethiopia, Nigeria, South Sudan, Haiti depend on foreign production because their lands are not fertile enough or they do not have the resources to develop sustainable agriculture over time. That is, it is possible that some farmers are able to exploit the land and produce for some period, but their methods may harm the crop land in the long run and turn against them, making it impossible to work it again. The fact that fertilizer and pesticide exports have become more expensive in recent years is another reason that harms farmers. According to representatives of the UN, this is linked to another process, climate change. Droughts, fires, heavy rains, floods, storms, and hurricanes. These phenomena have affected local and regional crops around the world. While countries recover from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, and try to keep their fragile economies afloat, climate change has harmed food production worldwide. This was pointed out by the study Critical Points of Hunger. Early warning of acute food insecurity, presented by the FAO in June 2022. What consequences will this famine bring? The outlook is not good. As we already mentioned, food shortages will not only affect the poorest populations and those living on the brink of poverty. The problems resulting from this are energy-related, as we already see in the prices of oil, gas, and fuels that increase the cost of living in general. Also, social and political problems, which are the worst since they guarantee internal conflict within countries. Price increases for food resulting from INFLH ion provoke protests and can even trigger civil war. The cycle of poverty and misery increases as instability does not allow for investment. Imagine a boat with a hole through which water begins to enter. You can try to remove the water, but as long as that hole remains, it is likely that you will end up sinking with the boat. This happens with an unstable country, and this only worsens the precarious condition of the most deprived. It is warned that some of these difficulties will force people to migrate in search of better living conditions and opportunities. This was already visible before the famine and the pandemic, but this is not without risks 
as people put their lives in danger to cross to other countries or are received in a context that does not guarantee their freedom. Remember that we live in an interconnected world, and every link in the chain is impure What happens in one part of the planet has consequences for others, and this mainly affects those with fewer resources. The price of cereals, fuels, and the devaluation of currencies is one of the sustained aftermaths of our global reality. Added to that we have climate change, wars and migration from one country or continent to another. So what can we do? The solutions do not wait, and like opinions, everyone has one. Unfortunately, many of these solutions will not yield immediate results. For example, in the environmental case, solutions to reduce global warming will take 10 years to show results. In the case of the war between Russia and Ukraine, the logical solution would be to end the conflict and ensure that the production and distribution of resources once again guarantee proper economic development in the international market, thus sustaining the most affected countries. But the big problems will require big solutions from economic and political powers, such as ending the war or an economic policy focused on financing modern and efficient agricultural production methods. What can we do to navigate this global famine context effectively? We have to apply financial mentality of saving and investing in our daily lives. We must look for food alternatives that are economical and reliable, along with preventing any future shortages. Buy canned or non-perishable foods, learn from our ancestors, and eat what works best in our context. Save those high-calorie foods for possible shortages. Generate support networks among friends, family, and neighborhood residents to make a consumption strategy sustainable over time. For example, making bulk purchases to lower costs. This will not only help us with the consequences of the famine. As Lola Castro, director of the World Food Program says, with crises come opportunities. This can be an opportunity to live consciously, connected with our close circle, with a wakeful mind seeking consumption alternatives that go beyond this global crisis. Do you have another solution? Do you think this famine will force us to reconsider our way of life? Write in our comment box and don't forget to share this video. We believe that this information is important, which is why we invite you to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to not miss our content on this and other topics related to financial freedom.